And, uh, you know, I think I did the best introduction that I could do last year for Dr. Larry Weber. And I know that everybody probably knows who he is. Uh, so I think I'll just move on and ask you if you can come up and okay. say a few words, if you would, please. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Larry okay. Weber. Last year was the first year I ever came to this event, and uh, I, I think it won't be the last, because uh, uh, what I found is, I, I've been doing this for more than 40 years, 44 years to be exact, and uh, uh, I go to now three different events to learn about displays. First is CES, we all know that. The second one is the Society for Information Display, Display Week, which is going to be in Vancouver uh, the week after next. And uh, I think Robert originally scheduled this at the same time, and I told him, you can't do that, you know, because we'll, we'll all be someplace else, or a lot of us will be. But the third one is this event, okay? And I really mean this. It, it, at CES, I find out all the hype from all the manufacturers on what all's going to happen. At, uh, at the SID uh, Display Week, I find out what's going to happen in the future. It's all future technology. There's a few current products, but most of it's geared to the future. But it's only here that I can get, you know, the best displays <coughs> sitting right next to each other that have been calibrated by the best calibrators, uh, you know, very carefully uh, with, with all the same signal and, uh, and really see. So I'm excited to be here just so I can find out what's, what's happening. Um, and I, I think things are always changing in the display business. Uh, this year at CES, one of the things that I was very impressed with uh, was the Samsung display uh, that, that Jesse just presented to you. Um, it really was impressive because uh, they had the LCDs and the plasmas all in the same very highly illuminated room. And frankly, they all look very good. Okay, so there, I used to say back last year, if you look at my uh, YouTube video on my presentation last year, I'm not gonna repeat much of that. Uh, so if you want to know a little bit about me, you might listen to that. Uh, but uh, last year I said, well, what I tell people is, is if you want a, uh, uh, if you have a bright room, you want a really bright room, you want an LCD. If you've got a, a dimmer room, like this one is a sort of a dimmer room, uh, then you want a plasma. Uh, it's because of the ambient light, the contrast ratio is not so good on the plasma when the ambient light's really high. But I don't think that's true anymore. I think something's changed. Okay, and uh, as Jesse mentioned, plasma's sort of gotten beat up uh, by the liquid crystal technologies uh, in the, the bright showrooms of the Best Buys, and, and, and few of them understand that you should uh, look at, when you, when you buy a display, you should look at it in the ambient light you're going to use it in, which is your living room, which is never uh, as, as, uh, di as bright as the, the display showroom, except perhaps it's value electronics. Uh, so anyhow, it makes a big difference. And so the fact that, that plasma with filters, with enhanced luminance and, and these kind of things is becoming uh, close to, or, or actually as good as the LCD in many ambients, I think it's, it's gonna help us. And uh, I think one of the things that, that we've seen on, on these filters, uh, you, can, you can show, it, and you, do, you don't need a piece of, of expensive equipment. You need, instead of all this uh, gadgetry that these guys have got over here, you can use a $5 mag light flashlight, okay? And, and this is, I wanted to show you this because this is a very simple little thing. It's, it's just, it's like a point light source. And uh, most of you won't be able to see this, but uh, later on and during the break, uh, if you take it and let's say, put it up next to this display and then you look at the side, you can actually see the reflections. I can see the reflection off the front panel and I can tell just by looking at this that this is a ZT, <laughs> okay? You want it darker or lighter? It, it doesn't make much difference like right it. now. I mean, you could, you could just put a dark thing on there, make it completely sure. dark. Uh, but it's, uh, and I don't know whether people will be able to see it, but if you don't, it, it's, it's really hard to see from that far away. You, you've got to be about right here. But you can actually see the reflections, you know, in, 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 in this one here or, or this one here, you can see that gap that uh, uh, Greg mentioned, okay, which, which this has the gap because I see an extra reflection. Actually, I see the reflection of the front plate, the, the, the back surface of the front plate, 
and then I see the reflection off the panel itself, and then actually a little bit of reflection of the inside of the panel. So you can see all that just, just by doing you know, these kinds of tests. Uh, another thing you can do is you can look at, uh, for instance, this, this older panel. If I look here, you can, maybe you can see this. You see sort of a little of a, of a halo here, OK? That's the diffuse reflection. That's the thing that always kills the plasmas in the, in the bright ambience because uh, the light comes from, you know, it reflects off in every direction. And this is not the specular reflection, which is the one I'm looking at uh, when I see the actual ball. But, but here you see that halo. Well, if you go over here, you'll see that the halo isn't, uh, it's got a flat spot on the top and on the bottom. That's the Lubert filter, okay? And, and so that's helping because the light that comes up from, from up there doesn't get diffused off, okay? And that really is, is one of the things. And, and I can see that this one has a diffuse filter. And, and, and this, I mean, I'm sorry, it has the uh, Lubert filter. And this one has the Lubert filter. And you can see it's, it's actually, it's a little more skewed. Well, it's about even, the top and the bottom. And you can do the same thing for the LCDs. Uh, you know, for instance, this one, I can see, uh, actually, I see three reflections. So this has got a gap. Okay, it's got a front plate, and then it's got a gap, and I see actually three reflections in that. Uh, in this one, I look at it over here, I only see one. So, so they've done something different between the Sony and the Samsung here. And this one, I, I see one. Uh, so you can learn a lot. And of course, the LCDs are always good on diffuse reflection. Uh, you, you see very little diffuse reflection. So there's still uh, an advantage of the, of the liquid crystals on the diffuse re reflection. But the plasmas have gotten so much better that I think they're going to be very competitive in the future. And so I look forward to, uh, to seeing how well they do in the marketplace. So uh, let me just uh, uh, keep moving here. Uh, this is, uh, again, you can look at the YouTube from last year, and I, I'll spend some more time, I spent some more time there describing this. But what's amazing to me is this is the plasma technology, this is the liquid crystal technology, and if you look at these displays, they all look pretty close to the same. These technologies are really a lot different, okay? Here, each pixel in the plasma is, is a light source in itself, which can radiate in all directions, so that means uh, the colors don't change with viewing angle. Uh, they, they have, they, they, the luminance doesn't change with angle. Whereas the liquid crystal, it's, it's really a light shutter with a backlight. It's a, it's a system. And so it has a harder time if, if we go off axis, well, the contrast ratio may change or the, uh, the color may shift a little bit. And it's just a challenge, uh, more of a challenge uh, for, for liquid crystals to do some of these things. But the plasma has the challenge of the ambient light reflectivity. Uh, the li liquid crystal only transmits about 5% of the light when it's full on. So it's like putting a black filter, a really strong black filter in front of it. And that's why it's so good in the, in the high ambient light. And uh, a liquid crystal, if we, uh, OK. Uh, this is uh, the way the liquid crystals work. There's always some sort of little lamp on the side here, which right now is an LED. Uh, and then there's the fusers that uh, you know, bring that light through here. And, and the reason I wanted to point this out is one of the things I always like to look at uh, is, is I like to see how easily those, those LEDs are viewable. Now, this one looks pretty good. I don't see, I don't see, I think the LEDs are usually along the side and along the side here and, and you'll see them. So you, you'll look at them. And sometimes they put them on the top. You know, I don't know. Top, top, bottom, left, bottom. Uh, okay. I think on Samsung you're or on the sides. Right. Side. Yeah, and so uh, you know, when you're looking at a dark image, that's usually you'll see those things and you'll say, oh, I don't like that. Or if they do a good job of it, uh, then, then you shouldn't see it. So, so that's one of the things that, that, that look for, and, and you won't see that on the plasmas uh, because they, of course, are their individual lights. Uh, another thing which is interesting this year is uh, this display right here. Uh, Sony has come up with a, uh, uh, what they call the triluminous, uh, uh, what is that what you say, triluminous LEDs. And um, this is a, an interesting new technology. Uh, what they did was use the, the QD Vision Quantum Dots. Uh, this is a company out in Mass Massachusetts that makes these, these little nanoparticle, par par uh, nanoparticles uh, that are actually a powder. And uh, these things allow them 
what they do is they coat the, the blue LED. They start out with a blue LED, and they coat them with these little green nanoparticles and red nanoparticles. Or they, they may not coat them, they may put them you know, in some film. Uh, but the point is, instead of using the, the yellow phosphor, uh, the way white LEDs are made these days is you start out with a blue LED, and then you put on a yellow phosphor, which excites the yellow phosphor. The blue will excite the yellow phosphor and give you this light here and this light here, and it ends up being white. Well, the nice thing about these quantum dots is you can engineer them. You can tune this band of red exactly where you want it in the eye. You can tune this green exactly where you want it by changing the size of the quantum dot. And so, uh, what they do then is, uh, this, they'll, they'll make it like this. A regular white LED will have the backlight on the side and it'll be white. It's essentially a blue LED with a, a yellow phosphor. Whereas with these uh, quantum dots, they'll have the blue LED and then this, this film that has the red and the green in it. And because they can uh, get these colors exactly where they want it, you should get better color. And so one of the things I'll be looking at to see is, is this color really better than that color or better than that color and see what the measurements make up. I mean, you, you can always uh, uh, adjust colors and, and uh, so maybe this doesn't buy you. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. Uh, last year, we saw the, um, the Sharp, the Sharp display, the Elite. Okay, and the, uh, that display has a yellow color in addition to the red, green, and blue. And my recollection was it didn't perform anywhere near as better, as good as some of the others. So, so that's, this is an interesting technology. I think it's a very good way to do it. I think it's, it's probably more efficient. It might take less power because you can tune this phosphor to be right in the middle of where the band pass on your filter is. So you, you, it's a way of engineering things much better. So, so this may be a, a way of the future for, uh, for uh, uh, LED displays. Uh, and so does it bias anything or doesn't it? So we'll hear, see here tonight. Okay, one last thing I wanted to make a comment on is uh, I want to uh, give you a pitch on something that I think is very important. Uh, and this is, there's a new display measurement standard. It's called the Information Display Measurement Standard. IDMS. And uh, this just came out in the last year. Actually, it was published uh, almost a year ago. Wasn't it right after last year's event? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right yeah, after last year. I didn't have to mention it to you. Yep. Now, this is, uh, some of you might have, there was a, a visa standard which was out for a while. And most standards are sort of stuffy and, and you know, you have to read through some crazy procedure. This one is very reasonable, very easy to read, and it's tutorial. So if you want to know how to measure something on a display, you just look it up here, and it's even got uh, you know some comical uh, uh, cartoons and, and all, all sorts of crazy stuff in it. Okay, and it's in color, and uh, it is very comprehensive. Now I didn't tell you the best part of this. The best part is it's free. Okay, so all you have to do is go to this site here, icdm-sid.org. Okay. And you can download a PDF of this thing. Now you can, you can pay, I don't know, I think it's 100 bucks or something like that for this printout copy, which old guys like us, like me, prefer. Okay, but uh, uh, if you just want to, you can't search this very easily, so I use both, okay? Uh, but uh, if I'm trying to explain something to somebody, I'll just look it up here and, and it'll say exactly how you should do it. It'll tell you what you know, some of the pitfalls are, you know, what some of the advantages are, and it'll also give you multiple methods. For, for measuring this stuff. So uh, uh, for me, this is a, a fantastic document. And there were uh, about 100 uh, uh, contributors to this. They don't even list the contributors in this, this thing. But uh, uh, it was really the who's who of display metrology were working on this. All the best experts of the world internationally put this thing together within the uh, Society for Information Display. And we thought it was so important that we didn't want to charge it. We wanted it to, to become widely used. So I'm sure many of the people here and, and also those on the internet will be interested in, in, in seeing this. So I think I spent enough time here. And uh, let me do, just uh, finalize by thanking Robert and Wendy for doing this. Okay? <laughs> because uh, this is just fantastic. And like I say, it's, it's one of my three highlights, uh, you know, display events of the year. So thank you very much.